With us, just joining us, is the Speaker of the House of Minnesota, uh, Mr. Kurt Zellers. Good morning. Morning, Bob. How are you? I'm doing great. Tom, you, Tom, you guys are uh, going to sit together, so that's good. You've been sitting. You, tell me the story. You guys sat together in the house for years, right? Well, uh, Mary Liz years. Holberg, yeah. yeah, Mary Liz Holberg, who uh, decides all the floor seats for 134 people, smartest woman over at the Capitol. The one mistake she admits to making every time <laughs> is putting what my wife, a fourth grade teacher, would call the two naughty boys in the back row. <laughs> Well, we got a lot to talk about because obviously uh, the uh, the budget bills are done, right? Yep. And and that's out, and we'll see what happens with the governor. And I know that we have a ton of questions for you. We've been yep. raking you over the coals the last few weeks, so oh, that's um, all right. Hey, at any other day of the week, it's fine. I grew up on a farm picking rocks as a kid. <laughs> Nothing at the Capitol that we do is anywhere near as hard a job as uh, I, I'm used to. It. My family are used to. It. It's fine. I. I'm a big boy. I can take right, it. Okay. Well, Kurt, I hate to say this. I mean, you you are on radio, so people can't see it. But it looks like you tried catching a few rocks too. <laughs> well, you know they they say you are what you work on. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's why that's why I'm fit for this job. You know, you go down to the Capitol, and yeah. it's uh, you know one time you know it's your friends, another time it's your enemies. Sometimes it's people who don't uh, care either way that come down to beat you up, but. Uh, I'm not in it to, you know, for my sake, I'm not in it to make sure that everybody loves me or everybody thinks I'm doing a great job. Uh, my family, and this is uh, not to get too far off questions, Bob, but uh, I, I got asked this on the campaign trail last fall, and I went to 13,814 doors three times. Once myself, there's two times a bunch of folks helped me go door to door. And I'm walking around, and it's an 80-degree day, day in July, and this lady, I walk up, she says, I'm Kurt Zellers, I'm running for office, here's a little literature, and she goes, so... You're in politics. What do you like best about it? <laughs> and without thinking, Bob, I said, well, nothing. And she looked up at me and she goes, really? She goes, well, then why do you do it? I said, because. I said, my family, I said, my stepdad has a 133-year-old farm. We were there before statehood. Original Homestead Act farm. My dad is a GPS surveyor. He's been over in Cairo, Egypt. He's been in Switzerland. He's been any place but America doing project work. Because a small business owner, you go where the work is. I said, I've seen what happens when government comes to help you. My grandpa, when I was 12 years old, we're driving around the farm, a stack of cattails in the corner of a field. He says, uh, I said to him, Grandpa, why aren't we farming that this year? He says, well, you want to know why? Because the guys from the government came over here, and you see those five cattails? He said, they're just some, you know, this year they happen to grow because it's a wet spring. He said, next year they'll be gone. But some guy from the government said that's a wetland. He said, so for three years we can't farm that? We ain't going to make any money on it. We're not going to grow any crops to feed anybody just because some smart aleck, and that wasn't the term he used, but this is a family program, Bob. Some smart aleck from the <laughs> yes, government. Yes, it is. Some smart aleck from the government come out here and told us we're not going to be able to farm it. So my wife thinks that's the quintessential moment, and he said that, that he goes, so Kurt, Kurt, you be careful when somebody from the government comes to help you. That's absolutely <laughs> correct. All right, Kurt Zeller, Speaker of the House of Minnesota, Tom Emmers here, Bob Davis. Quick break. We'll be back and we'll get into some questions here next at News Talk 100.3 KTLK. News Talk 100.3 FM KTLK. This is Bob Davis. We are speaking with the Speaker of the House, Kurt Zellers. Tom Emmer is here. And we're just going to jump right into the meat this morning. Uh, you've got some new House members and, to a lesser extent, some new senators in the legislature who are uh, very frustrated with a $32 billion budget turning into a $34 billion budget. Uh, how did that happen? Well, you know, interesting, Bob, it was the uh, the forecast. You know, the, the, the good uh, God-fearing taxpayers of the state uh, went out and overproduced in, in government terms. We think they just went out and did a good job of earning. So when we got the updated forecast, we had a forecast last spring. We get one that's the state economist comes in and says, Here's what we've seen from receipts. This is what we've actually know we have in the checkbook in the state. Here's what we have. So when we reassess then, here's what the, you know, was 6.2 billion uh, in February came down and all of a sudden it was 5 billion. So in other words, the state or the taxpayers of the state produced more than the bureaucrats down at the Capitol were expecting them to. So the checkbook went from this, from, you know, from a 5 billion or from a $6.2 billion deficit to a $5 billion deficit. They produced another $1.2 billion that the state economists weren't expecting. So that doesn't explain the 32 to the $34 billion budget. Well, right. It, what we've said all along is we're just going to spend what we have. Now, in government terms, spending also includes us cutting taxes. 
you know, that it's the thing that uh, our, our folks and uh, my friend, good friend, Paul Thiessen, which is a nice way the Democrats always talk to us on the <laughs> House floor. My good friend, Paul Thiessen, is running around the state saying Republicans said they'd only spend 32 point or 32.2 or 30.2 point billion dollars. Well, we always have said all along, uh, we'll spend whatever the taxpayers take in. We had a constitutional amendment to Governor Pawlenty and, uh, you know, Tabor's usually the name it's called, but he said, you know, we're just going to spend what we take in. Now, spending, again, in government terms, is tax relief. So we put $200 million into tax relief for the bottom two tax brackets, for the small business owners that have been struggling like heck to get through this, uh, this terrible, terrible recession. We gave them some property tax relief. But that counts in the $32 billion versus $34 billion, or $32.5 billion is what it, the more accurate number. That's spending in government terms. In my terms, I think it's just making sure that people, the business people, the people who produced it got a little bit of it back because if we give it back to them, guess what? They actually go out and do something good with it, not spend it on St. Paul. Yeah, but see, I'm, my eyes are glazing over yeah. already, and I say this to Tom all the time because we all read that it was a $32 billion budget, and it's coming out of the, of the committees and going to the governor as $34 billion. How do you explain that and say, we're going to reduce spending. It went from 32 to 34, and you, what you just said, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, th- let me put it in real simple terms. We're gonna just going to spend what the taxpayer send us. Now, spending is also tax relief, plain and simple. There's nothing more difficult to it than that. If we want to... So the $2 billion is, spe- is tax relief? No, it's not all tax relief, and it's a billion and a half. It wasn't 32, and, that, and that's the talking point from our opponents on the other side. Well, I mean, yeah. that's what was in the newspaper. I mean, I, I have two different newspaper articles, that, but they have the chart, the pie chart, said $32 billion. Right, and that's at the time when we took over last fall. That was the number. That's what the state economist said. Here's what you can expect in next year's budget. That when Tom was running, that's what he had to work with. But this too. is the, I mean, but this was the budget that was supposedly spent. So we spend, so if we took in $50 billion, will we spend $50 billion? Well, no. We're, if we were that overproducing, we wouldn't have any kind of a budget deficit either. But the, the point is, not the number, but what you're doing with it. And that's what we've said all along. Here's what we're going to spend. We're going to only spend what we take in. And from our perspective, the things that we're actually now, you know, quote unquote, spending money on, I I have a sheet here that uh, the Democrats have put together on us. And if Paul Thiessen is on the House floor, he's the House Minority Leader, the Democrat leader, banging away on our shin saying, you guys want to only spend $30 billion. You want to spend, why do you think that is? Because it's not, it ain't because Paul Thiessen, a guy who was trying to run to the left of Mark Dayton, is a fiscal conservative. No, he's trying to get the discussion off of what we're doing with the money versus the number. Let me jump in here real quick, Kurt, because in in other terms, I, I'm going to try and say, uh, put what you just said, I believe. I'm going to ask you if this is what you're communicating. One, I, Bob, you keep talking about uh, what we've spent. You know what? When we were running last summer, we put out a budget that was 32 point whatever based on the projection that the uh, the state was going to have in terms of uh, money to spend, all right? Uh, yes, it coincided with the uh, general fund at the time because there wasn't going to be any more money. But here's the, the key that uh, I, I think people don't understand. When you give citizens a tax cut, when you reduce their taxes, the bureaucrats in government count it as a spending item. Oh, I got that. I understand but that. This but, is, but this still doesn't explain how we went from 32 to $34 billion. And I think this is one of the issues with the people who are fiscal conservatives out there that are furious because they don't understand how we went from 32 to 34. You sat here three, three weeks ago and said it should be $28 billion. Well, but I talked about starting the discussion, and Kurt and I have had this discussion over yeah. time. I always thought, and we get to differ on this, yeah. I always thought you should start at 28, 29 and talk about why did it grow so gargantuan in just uh, a couple of bienniums and where is all the money going? But why don't you explain why you guys did what you did and, and give people the rationale? Sure. And, and, and again, Bob, it's 32 and a half to 34. But again, that's the what is in the checkbook. We're not actually going out and spending any new money. We're not ex, we're not going to say, hey, everybody, we're we expect to get about 36 billion. So we're going to ramp up there. We're just spending it just like you would do in your if you go home and you in your checkbook. Oh, I got a bunch of bills. I got to pay the mortgage. I got to pay for some food and some gro- or some clothes for my kids. I got two thousand dollars in the checkbook. I'm going to write twenty five hundred dollars worth of checks. We're not doing that. But From our perspective, this is a legitimate budget. This is what we think is a really, really good, honest, sincere offer to the people of Minnesota, to the governor, to what we think as Republicans. This is what we ran on. And and I'll take issue with anybody. I mean, Tom and I were one of five, one of six, one of eight 
on any different, you know, build down at the Capitol. I've been in the trenches having my, you know, <laughs> my knuckles, I'll say, <laughs> kicked in on, on being a fiscal conservative. I've got all the street cred in the world on being a fiscal conservative. So anybody who, you know, and, and I don't think well, you not accuse me of being a fiscal conservative. No, but I mean, what, but I think, what, I think I the confusion the is communication. I think I, I think sure. I think the issue is communication because people see thirty two and they hear thirty four and they and and they, and we're hearing all this confusion and we're out of time in this segment but we'll come back and pick it up yeah no I, absolutely and we we're going to take some calls as well we're speaking with the speaker of the house of Minnesota Kurt Zellers Tom Emmer here Bob Davis we'll be back shortly at News Talk one hundred point three FM KTLK and we're going to talk about this issue of uh, budgeting and uh, and the numbers and we'll talk about this this. Uh, question of whether there's a split with conservatives uh, versus moderates in the House and the Senate. Back shortly at News Talk 100.3 FM KTLK. Glenn Beck. Entertainment and enlightenment. Weekdays at 9. News Talk 100.3 FM. Welcome back. News Talk 100.3 FM. This is Bob Davis. Tom Emmer is here. There's so many people here. I got to try to remember everybody's name. But I, the best part about this, because Kurt Zellers is here, the Speaker of the House of Minnesota, I get to say, Mr. Speaker! That's pretty cool. Uh, we've been talking about the budget, and we are going to get to your calls. Uh, I want to make one real quick point uh, before we, we get into this and, and try to keep it short, Mr. Speaker, because we want to get to these calls, because I think people have questions. Uh, part of the change in this year's budget is that we had a $2 billion stimulus, you know, payment from the federal government on the last budget. Right. And uh, so this year you've replaced that. Why people often said when, when we were originally talking about the stimulus, this is going to put the states on crack. I mean, it was supposed to create jobs. This is why it didn't, because it went to pay bills for states. We went back into the next budget. You're replacing the $2 billion. Why replace the stimulus if it's a one-time only thing? Well, and that's what it did. It set us up for this cliff. I mean, absolutely. Why not go over the cliff? Well, <laughs> because we want to make sure that uh, our senior citizens in nursing homes actually get care. And, you know, the, and the health care is actually the, probably the best example of it. We cut $1.8 billion, that's a billion with a B, out of the health and human services budget in this last uh, just in on uh, let's see, we we started Tuesday night at four four o'clock. We finished up Wednesday morning at three a.m. with the Health and Human Services budget. We cut one point eight billion out. So when people say, "Why are you spending more money?" We're not. We're, well, we cut it's a nine hundred million dollar increase but in HHS. Cut, but that was because of the Obama money. They were expecting another six billion. So we cut all the or excuse me four billion. So we cut it by at least a half. But it gets to the point where. You are going to start to cut nursing homes. You are going to cut, start to cut developmentally disabled uh, homes and and some of the care that those folks get. And I don't believe in a you know in the uh, what did somebody say the uh, the hammock? It should be a safety net, not a hammock in government. We believe in a safety net for those who can't care for themselves. That's what it's down to. And you know you could pick out you know you can find a fifty thousand dollar grant here or there, but that's a sparrow uh, toot in a hurricane. You know what I mean? That's not. What we're talking about is basic services for basic people. And from our perspective, all we make no mistake about it, Bob, we went down there to make sure that every dime of the taxpayers is spent in the best way possible. Now, I'm a little bit uh, chunkier than I was when I first started. Husky, 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 yeah. husky. You know, you go on a diet, you don't expect the first day to go for a five mile run and drop that 20 pounds. I do, do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. And how'd that work for you, Tom? It didn't. Try the bean diet. Yeah. Here we go. But if you start now and maybe by the, you know, come June, you'll have lost the 20 pounds. What we have started in this budget all across is to make sure that taxpayer dollars aren't being wasted. We have fundamentally turned the way government functions. Make right. no question about it. And it's the hard work because you can't explain it with the tax, with a sound bite of he wants to raise taxes. You want the easy, quick and dirty version? We're going to balance budget, not raising taxes. Plain and simple. Mark okay. Dayton wants two and a half billion dollars in tax increases, job killing tax increases for another 22 percent in spending. Well, Plain how do you simple. know he hasn't put his whole budget out there? How do you know what he really yeah, wants? We haven't gotten the we actually haven't gotten our our hands on his budget and having his commissioners come into our committees and testify. His tax bill came up in the House and Senate, got one vote. And he said, well, don't vote for that because it's a Republican stunt. Do you expect uh, him to veto these bills? You know, I, we honest to gosh, Bob, uh, we've done our our work. And in some cases, if it's a good job, it, it actually he signs the bills. This House file one which is a, a reforming of the complete and utter red tape that is environmental permitting and actually going out and building buildings. 
real quick, one example, a, a, a guy who was working on a project said uh, it's going to save two to $300,000 on this project in anywhere from four to six months. We passed, that's House File 1, the very first bill we introduced in the session. We introduced it, we, pushed, we, we really pushed it through the process fast, and then at the end of the day, the governor said, you know what, There's, this is what business owners really want, 32.6, 34, I'm with you on that. That's all math. You want to know what people really were concerned about? It's jobs and the economy. First thing we did was pass the bill that actually is going to help people build buildings. Actually, my dad said, as a small business owner, one of you damn bureaucrats went and cut red tape. Congratulations. I'll get back and do it <laughs> well, again. And he signed it. He well, signed that he bill. Signed, I believe that there's, I think there's a, there's a debate going on between people who really do want serious, and if you will, if you will pardon the use of the term draconian, cuts in the budget now versus this question of jobs and the economy. And, and I don't know that spending more necessarily produces jobs but i understand what you're saying it's just it's very hard to drill down and get to it and i think that's the concern of a lot of people that that it, the, the communication part of it is so complicated that you end up glazing over charlie you're on news talk 100.3 with the speaker of the house of minnesota good morning good morning i'm one of the glazed over folks you're you're uh, referencing here uh, you know i've been listening to all this double talk and gobbledygook about you know uh, well it's really not money and it's really not spending and whatever what i see are, are two different things going on here okay governor uh dayton you know uh, requested 37 billion dollars in spending okay a, an extreme amount five billion dollars more than what we uh, had scheduled to spend okay we had 32 billion dollars scheduled to spend and i don't care about the projections of of the the government okay how much they expect us to take in it seems to me we're always uh, you know, uh, tripping over ourselves because we we expected that money to be there, and then it didn't quite get there. Yeah, what so, if the projections are wrong is what you're saying, right. Charlie. Right, so this time around, the projections are higher. Okay, so, so do, do you have a question for the speaker? What what was the question? The, the question is, is why have we stepped up to spending what they're projecting? Why haven't we cut it to $28 billion? Thanks, Charlie. Well, and, and to your point, Charlie, we aren't spending more than we expect. That's what we are actually doing. We're only going to say this is what we know is coming in. That's all we're spending. And, again, tax cuts in government speak is spending. Well, why it's do very, the tax cuts? Well, because we actually— I mean, is it necessary if you're dealing with deficits? Why not wait till next time to do the tax cuts? Well, I mean— Personally, I think it's good to give the people uh, the money. The, the reason we went from $6.2 billion in a deficit to $5 billion is we let people keep a little bit of their money. And if you are worried about folks at the bottom two brackets, that's who we cut, the bottom two deciles, or I'll just say brackets because I'm, I'm, I'm not a tax guy either, <laughs> okay. but it's the bottom two brackets and then letting small business owners, because if you don't make anything in your small business, you don't make a, a dime next year. Guess what? The tax man's going to come for your property taxes. We thought it was a good idea to let small business owners have a little bit of property tax relief because we want to keep the small business owners in business, not have them, you know, gobbled up by a big business. Well, and Bob, you and I have had this disagreement all the time. It's about, uh, well, okay, if you're going to cut the budget, if you're going to try and control the budget and start to reduce it, reduce the size of government, why do tax uh, cuts right now, too? Because it's a matter of economy. If you give these small business owners more of their own money, you give them the opportunity to invest back into their own business. And by the way, well, you but, talk to the guy I'll in the street. Well, but don't go turn around and say that's spending. Well, but we aren't. I would tell you that's not spending. I think that's one of the most cruel things that government bureaucrats do is tell you when a right. citizen gets to keep his or her own money, it somehow is a spending idea I agree. for government. That's I, ridiculous. If we, and if we go I by agree. that math, then we're, we're around, uh, you know, about 30. Uh, say, if that's the math, then if, if tax cuts aren't spending... Then yeah, we're we're well below thirty four billion dollars. So <laughs> right, we're down in. But you did replace the two billion. That's the other part of it. Peter, you're on News Talk one hundred point three with the Speaker of the House and Tom Emmer and Bob Davis. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you. Say I, I'm a little confused too, and and I am not. Uh, I'm not as conversant on on, you know, government speak. But uh, really, what I'm what I'd like to ask is. Uh, my wife and I are wage earners. We're in that 150 to 200, where we uh, apparently are very rich. We're going to be empty nesters soon. What have you done for people like us to convince us to stay in the state of Minnesota? Because frankly, you know, we got a decision to make. All right, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to hang up and let you take the answer off the air, so so uh, speakers always can get to it. Thank you. Sure, and and Peter, that is absolutely positively the point is we are not going to tax you out of our state. Mark Dayton will. It's no more complicated a communication strategy or a statement. 
He wants to tax you out of the state. We don't. He wants two and a half billion dollars in job killing tax increases. We don't. Actually, Kurt, uh, Mr. Speaker, I should call you. <laughs> That's the, uh, right. No, you shouldn't. I, yes, no, you shouldn't. I, I, people can't see me, but I'm genuflecting and kissing his ring right now. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, That's kidding. Mr. Speaker to what, you. He what, punch me. What Mr. Dayton <laughs> wants to do is for Peter and his wife uh, tax them at the highest rate in the country, I believe almost 11%. Yeah. And uh, the budget that you guys have passed, I understand, doesn't do that at all. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. I want to ask you about the Tea Party. And we can't talk about it during the break. We have to hold We have to hold it for the air. So just keep, be, zip it. And we'll, we'll be right back Duhast. at News Talk 100.3 FM KTLK. God, now it's turkeys are taking over the... News Talk 100.3 FM, KTLK. This is Bob Davis. We're, here, we're sitting here with the Speaker of the House of Minnesota, Kurt Zellers, as well as Tom Emmer, taking your calls as well, 651-989-5855. And we're talking about the budget, which has been something we've talked about on the roundtable and we've talked about here on this show a lot in the last few weeks. Uh, Mr. Speaker, did, did the Tea Party help the Republicans in the 2010 election victory, uh, which really resulted in a historic change for the House and the Senate in the state? And uh, are you listening to them? Uh, well, I, I think absolutely. Uh, you know, we had, uh, and you know, I went to a lot of Tea Party rallies across the state. Um, for us, you know, we were focused on, uh, you know, 20 to 25 races. So, um, you know, I didn't get to go to maybe a Tea Party in St. Louis Park or in Duluth or in Minneapolis, but the cities where we were focused, absolutely. And, you know, for, you know, for like guys like Tom and I who are already on the, you know, fiscal conservative, we're not spending, we're not wasting any more taxpayer money. We're getting government out of businesses. For us who were already there, it was great to have company. But, I mean, they're saying we didn't cut the budget. They're saying that the, this is what they're upset about. They're upset because we went from 32 to 34, and this is why I keep coming back to this, because it doesn't feel like it's penetrating. Sure, and, and to, to a lot of our folks, uh, until you look at the budget, again, we cut across the board 15% of government. Now, some would say, well, if you're going to cut 15, why not cut 50? Well, I mean, again, I'll go back to my, uh, when you go on the diet, you don't expect to drop to 20 pounds the second day on your diet. You got to get in there so, first and foremost, and we've done that. So a billion dollars more for education. Does the state need, this is a state that already spends a huge portion of our budget on education anyway. Do we need a billion more dollars for early childhood stuff? Uh, is that necessary? No, no, and, and that's the point is that we're not putting it into just the basic good old-fashioned education Minnesota. We actually put in money spending. We put it into reform. There are opportunity scholarships in there so that kids who are in an inner city school who got a 50-50 chance at getting a life with a high school diploma actually can say, you know what, I'm going to get the heck out of this horrible school. I want to go someplace where I can actually get my diploma. I can have a shot at going to college and then have a better life for me, for my spouse, if I have kids, God bless them. That's what we did. So it's not always just the spending. It's how you're spending it. And the easy job, Bob, honest to God, would be to go in there, whack the budget 25%. Mark Dayton is doing the cheap and easy. Hey, I'm not going to do anything new in government. I'm just going to go out there and raise taxes. We're doing the hard work. It's hard work turning 40 years worth of Democrat dominance down at the Capitol in a day, or in this case, in three months and seven days. That's how long we've been on the job, or three months and six days. We haven't even been there 100 days. We passed over a billion dollars worth of cuts in January. The governor vetoed it. So if you want to know where we've been, before the budget forecast even came out, we went in and enacted what you know Tom and I voted for, which is the governor's on allotments. We went in and enacted those in the first month, and everybody seems to kind of forgotten about that. The governor wanted us to because he that was some, some actual real-life cuts in budget right away. He said, no, we sent it to him. He said, don't send it to me. I'm going to veto it. We To our folks, they said, no, this is what we sent you to do. We did what we were going to do. We said we would do, which is cut government what, what, but and spending. Okay, except we're backfilling the $2 billion. We're, we're raising education a billion. We're raising HHS $900 million, and there's reasons for it. But it provokes me to ask, what is a conservative to you? What does a conservative mean? What does it mean to be a conservative? Well, well I mean, how much time do we have left on the clock? Six <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Six minutes. Uh, the private, for, To me, you don't spend more than you take in. You get government out of the private sector, and you get government out of the job of deciding which business is a good business, a bad business. And you want a, a, a you know quicker version? It's the Yellow Pages. If there's something you can find in the Yellow Pages that government's doing right now, we should stop government from doing it. And as from a, a you know personal standpoint, 
there's all kinds of socioeconomic. I mean, that's the, the economics. Is so, we just shouldn't raise taxes. We shouldn't waste your dollars that you send to the capital. We should spend them in a way. And if we do it right this year, two years from now, we can go in and, and again. So that's the strategy is to, is to sort of soft pedal it or do as much as you oh. can this year and then next year come in and, and try to, to, to push a little harder. Why not reverse that and push harder the first session and then come in, you know, in the election year? And, and, we, uh, and we are. Believe you me, we are. We've spent the last three, you know, say basically three months just absolutely. There are bills in the state government finance bill that Keith Downey's worked on. This is initiatives. Do you know that when we go to cut government, so in other words, back office consolidation, that's the, the cute term, but we're going to eliminate offices that do the same thing all across the state or all across the metro. The bureaucrats in St. Paul come up with a fiscal note. This is how they kill our ideas. This is where this And Tom's is. told me about those. Yeah, and, and I, I mean, you, if you want to go to sleep tomorrow, you know, in the next, 10, <laughs> next minute and a half, I'll explain them. But basically, here's what they do. They say, in order for us to consolidate government or cut government, it's going to take us 72 employees every year and $10 million dollars. A thirty million dollar cost to go and consolidate government. So that's what we're up against. And from our perspective, we're hey, I absolutely I didn't you know I didn't get into this game to be the most popular guy in the block. In fact, if you know if if I had my druthers, it'd be a heck of a lot easier to be in the private sector doing a job. I don't I'm not in this to be a career politician. I could care less. If he, anybody knows my name, don't care at all. What I'm here to do is to help the small business guys, the, the mom and pop businesses like my dad, my stepdad, who's a farmer get government off their back, out of their pocket, and the heck out of their way. You got 12 recalcitrant, let's say, uh, I guess it's House members down there who are very upset because they feel that they haven't been included in the process. Uh, you want to talk about that? Oh, sure. I I, I think that's absolutely untrue. Um, we've had caucuses. Uh, <laughs> and a ca- well, yeah. we know there's one guy, but that's it. Yeah, well. No, Mark. Uh, you know, well, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Some of our friends vote for our, have voted for our bills. Mark voted for uh, you know state government finance bills. So no, I, I mean I, I think that's also another good Democrat tactic of saying, oh, there's twelve Republicans, there's six Republicans that won't for this for this bill. You know what they call the guy who finishes last in his med school class, doctor. It takes sixty eight votes to pass a bill off the House floor. We've passed all of our budgets. We have now presented the governor with a balanced budget without raising taxes, and tax relief. Plain and simple. There's no more difficult talking points. And we've cut government. We are not soft pedaling. If you want to know how ugly <laughs> the Democrats think it is, go and attend one of their little spin sessions that they're doing going around the state. They will tell you that we are being barbaric and draconian and oh, we, we horrible and nasty. Yeah. And, you know, in some cases, it's not as much as we want. But again, we've got to do And we've also got the guy over in the corner office. That, no, the a, corner closet. <laughs> I'm being generous, Tom. Yep. Uh, we've got a guy over in the corner office and the governor that ha- has proven to us that he will veto some of the things we set up. But he's also proven if it's, uh, again, with the teacher licensure, ten- you know, this is a this is for Jeb Bush, who is Mr. Education Reform across the country, said that the education bill that we passed is nation-leading reform. It gets the bureaucrats out of the classroom and lets the teachers teach, but then also puts measurements on there to say, hey, if a teacher sucks, get them out of the classroom. Right. And this is... Coming from a guy who's, uh, you know, God love you, my, God love my wife, a fourth grade teacher, and she'll tell you the union absolutely guarantees, no matter how good or bad you are, you got a job for life. What we put in the education bill says, if you're bad, you're getting out of there. We're kicking you out of the classroom. So what bad. happens next? The, the, the this has been sent yeah. off to the governor. When do you think you'll know what, whether he's going to veto this or not? And if he does, then what? Well, and if he does, then we'll start again. But what we have said all along is we're going to make you a legitimate offer. His offer isn't legitimate. He peeled the fifth-tier tax bracket off, which was not number one with a, a, a wink and a nod. This is number one with a blast. He had the highest tax rate in the country by four percentage points. This Mr. is this Mr. is the. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Bob. Well, we're just about a minute left. Okay. So well, I, I, I want to just ask one question because uh, I haven't heard you say it today. I heard you say uh, what happens next in response to Bob's question. But my understanding from talking with you and others before today is uh, you put out what you believe is your first, best, and last offer. So if the governor yeah. vetoes it, what does that mean for the future? Well, that's where the taxpayers of state got to weigh in. It's either what we've got All a right. balanced budget with no tax increases or a $2.5 billion tax increase for 22% more spending. Kurt Zeller, Speaker of the House of Minnesota. Tom Emmer, thank you. Bob Davis, we'll see you again on Monday at News Talk 100.3 FM, KTLK. Boom. FM.